Gary Schaefer, cross country coach at South Coast Coal Mines. Welcome to Hard Rocker Cross Country. Uh, we do have our first home meet this weekend in, in Robbinsdale Park. We have three other teams coming in to compete with us. Uh, Gillette Community College, Rocky Mountain College, and Black Hill State University. It looks to be a pretty good meet uh, with those four teams. Black Hill State has been a perennial power in this region for several years. Uh, Rocky Mountain College also came on pretty strong last year and they've got a lot of returning athletes. So we expect good things from, good competition from those teams. Uh, Gillette Community College also has a couple of outstanding runners. Um, one, Wesley Churriot from Kenya, who's uh, uh, a very fast runner. So they're gonna challenge our athletes. Um, we are pretty excited though to see what we've got in our new crop of freshmen. We have six or seven freshmen and uh, several of them came in in very, very good shape, and uh, we want to see how well they can compete against this tougher, stiffer competition. Um, as well, Tyler Knack, uh, a sophomore for us, had a great summer of training. Uh, he's running very, very well, and, and we expect uh, good things from him this weekend. Um, as far as people we lost, uh, we lost Luke Freed, our number one, number two runner from last year. Uh, to graduation. Luke is still on campus. He'll run on Saturday unattached. Uh, he's doing graduate work here at School of Mines. And then Thomas Everett will be redshirting this year. He's a two-time national qualifier in cross country and also qualified in the marathon last year outdoors. Um, Thomas has got a big year this year with the ROTC department, so we're redshirting him and uh, get one more year out of him next year. Um, Thomas will uh, you know he'll give us some some good strength some some good leadership in uh, uh, in practices this year uh, we also have another senior Matt Pike who's running fairly strong this year um, we expect him to finish up and have a, a good senior year uh, can you tell us about your women's team uh, women's teams down a little bit numbers wise uh, we graduated Kendra Chrisman uh, Kendall Donegan and uh, Brittany Hubness is still with us, but she only has track season left. Uh, so she's training with, with the young cross country team. Um, the other returners we have are, are junior uh, Alexis Godeke and uh, sophomore Danica Dino. Uh, Danica qualified for nationals along with Brittany Hubness outdoors in the marathon last year. And uh, so some pretty good runners at the front end. We also add uh, Brittany Wood from Haver, Montana, and uh, uh, as a freshman, and Sabrina Temple from uh, Glendive, Montana. And then uh, we're going to run a couple of track girls on our cross country team this year. Uh, one of those, Lillian Temple, who's a junior, uh, Sabrina's older sister. Lillian's a jumper for us, and she's going to going to fill in when we need her to in uh, in some of the cross country meets. So. Um, the women are kind of kind of building. We'll you know we'll see where we're at. Um, we also have a sophomore, Lindsay uh, Kirby, who's uh, still developing, but uh, she gives us a good solid fifth runner. And uh, so you know we'll we'll see where the women, how far we can bring them along. We're really looking towards the future with them, though. All right. Um, how does the uh, the transfer to uh, NCAA Division Two affect cross country at this point? Well, the the effect on cross country, the biggest effect is that we have no opportunity to qualify for postseason, um, and we have no conference meet to go to. Uh, what is happening, though, there are several other schools in our situation that are putting together some transitional, conference style, national style, uh, cross country meets, and, and so we'll try and attend those meets where we get to see a little bit more of our competition. Uh, in a little bigger venue, a few more teams. But all in all, in cross country and in track, um, our schedule doesn't change much. Um, our second meet of the season, we go up to Bozeman, Montana, uh, to Montana State Bozeman's uh, Invitational, where we'll see lots of D1 schools. Uh, then two weeks later, we'll go down to University of Colorado, where we see a lot of D1 and some of the top D2 schools. And then later in the season, we'll go over to Vermilion, where we'll see uh, University of South Dakota and, and some other top D1 and D2 schools. So 
really our, our competition isn't going to change. Our schedule doesn't change much with the transition to NC2A. It's just that now we'll be considered an NC2A school rather than an NAIA school. And is this going to affect like the goals of the season? Or what are the goals for the season? Well, because, because we don't have uh, postseason eligibility, um, one of the things we're looking at doing this year and next year is we're looking at it at our our development of athletes in a, in a two-year time frame. We want to bring the incoming freshmen this year along so that, that uh, in two years when they are eligible for postseason, they have developed to a point where we have a real shot at getting a, a team and or individuals to the national championship. So we're looking at it as, as an opportunity to develop our athletes to a greater level than, than maybe we've been able to do in the past. Um, this transition period gives us a no-pressure opportunity to, to put some miles on the athletes and, and really develop.